as far as the design, not really the best I've ever done. Actually, probably one of the worst. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. On this channel, we like to uh, make things for the out of doors. A lot of the times, I use a 3D printer for that, but I take a lot of insight and comments from you guys uh, over time, and we build things. So, this is Soft Plastic July. This is the third episode in Soft Plastic July. This whole month, I've been doing things associated with soft plastic lures. Uh, we've been making a lot of molds, been shooting those, and we've had a little bit of an influx of people to the channel, so I thought I would go back through the history of what I've done mold making, try and learn from that, do a little bit of a kind of a growth exercise by shooting every one of my molds. Then a lot of these will be on the channel, so I will put links up to the videos associated with those if you want to go back and see. A lot of these times, especially on YouTube, people will post videos, you'll think, oh my god, that's amazing, but in reality, it took a bunch of iterations to get to that point, and uh, you don't Get to really see that so i think just for ease of this i'm just gonna mix up one color that we're gonna pour throughout this whole video uh, i call it blown engine it's it's like a slightly translucent black and it has some large hexagonal 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 gold flake in it as well as fine dark gold and fine uh, bright gold so it just kind of looks like oil that you would find if you blew up an engine the first one that we're going to talk about here is a frog mold this video is up on my channel and ironically is the most popular thing on my channel because of course it's youtube so you never know what they're going to promote um but this was when i was just starting to get into it i wanted to make an injection mold for a soft plastic frog that was no longer in production the tiki toad uh in my eyes is one of the best if not the best top water presentation for bass, especially in the summer. I poured this not knowing what I'm doing. If you're interested, you can watch the video, of course. Uh, it works, and it still works to this day, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this video. Uh, there's a couple things to note with this mold. <laughs> I did use it, it did work, uh, but you need to like use two injectors on it because it's a, uh, I think I have a six ounce injector, which is kind of the medium range, it's a little bit smaller. So it took a lot of injections to get it. Uh, it flashes a little bit. Uh, you get a lot of dimpling, you get some crossover on there because it's not exactly tight, but the point is that it still works. Somehow that's the most uh, watched thing on my channel. I do owe this mold quite a bit because without it, I don't think I would have had the passion to even try and get into my own design or reproduction on other different types of lures. And I don't think I'd be where I'm at, where I am now, or where we're at with this channel. So I think it's pretty interesting just to see if that mold still works. Indeed it does. Um, <laughs> is it not the best way of going about it? I don't think so. There's much better ways now. We've learned that over time. But uh, I still appreciate it. I still get a kick out of using it, even if it does take up like two cups of plastic just to pour one out. So I got into 3D printing specifically because... It was kind of a low-cost alternative to CNC machining. And I knew that in some way, shape, or form, I would be able to use 3D printing to integrate into some of these hobbies and making different lures and baits and stuff for fishing. So I knew that that was something that had potential in the future. So this mold then is like a three swim bait mold that I did out of Alumalite again. And you can start to see some of the differences in design at this point. I started putting in an actual like a tree for that, you know, to connect all the swim baits together so you wouldn't have to be doing single molds each time. And then an actual position for the nozzle so the nozzle would fit into the mold, right? And At this time, I started realizing that I kind of needed a vacuum chamber at this point. Uh, the Lumalite will mix really well. 
but it also creates a lot of air cavities and without vacuuming them out you can see that in the mold itself it has quite a few air bubbles and and nicks and stuff that end up showing up on the plastic lure itself overall i think it was a big success on those swim baits considering that i really didn't know what i was doing i'm pretty happy with how they turned out still even pouring those now i kind of look back on it and think maybe i should make an eight cavity an eight cavity mold out of this uh just because i really like the action that they produce and kind of their overall design i think that was kind of one of those beginner luck scenarios where it just kind of all went downhill from there i did try this hand pour mold my idea was to uh, pour the mold upside down so the Lumalite would set up flat on the top and then I could pour in quickly and scrape off with a scraper. Uh, it doesn't work. That method is just doesn't work at all. I tried heating up the scraper to try that as well and it just it doesn't make it doesn't make for a good mold production. It doesn't make for a good bait. Uh, very inconsistent and stuff so throw that in the trash and we're on to the next one. So because I really love those topwater blow up bites with the Tiki Toad, I decided one of my first larger projects was going to be an actual design of a frog. Uh, there's a video up on this as well. I think it was almost a live stream actually where I created the frog in Mesh Mixer by using 3D uh, blending techniques instead of just 3D design itself. I, I, li I like doing that quite a bit. I like how the frog turned out. Um, the mold is also an aluminite again. Uh, there are air bubbles quite a bit in there. You want kind of a frog to have an action of a buzz bait. This one actually ends up just kind of like thumping through the water. The feet don't move very well. Overall, I think it was more of a failure design than in practice. And I think that kind of kept me going for the next couple molds. As far as the design, not really the best I've ever done. Actually, probably one of the worst. I was starting to realize that Aluminite is not that cheap and uh, you end up going through it quite a bit and uh, it was, the cleanup with Aluminite is just so disastrous because it's an epoxy itself so anything that you mix it with or anything you move around with is going to be stuck to your mixers, stuck to your table, stuck to everything. So I ended up going with Molmax 60. It also has a very high uh, hardness factor too which I liked. It's still flexible enough to release molds, but it also, uh, it's very like strong, so we can push it together with clamping, anything like that. So that's how we ended up with that. And then my first silicone was actually a cutaway mold of a large grub tail that I put on the back of baits. A two-part with index locations, much, much better for this kind of thing just way easier to do that than to cut away although this does work and it's just the action that these larger grub tails can do in the water is just pretty amazing so this was also 3d printed master so this was i designed this up to fit into that bait and i think it just if you just watch it in the water you just you get lost you can just keep watching it watching it Watch. So at about this time I had a subscriber suggest to me that instead of printing the master and using a mold box and pouring the silicone over it and all of that, why not just print the positive of the master in a mold box so everything's all in one printed. And then uh, after that just started taking off with ideas because it was such so much better idea to do that than to try and make a mold box cut it out of whatever it just wasn't making sense so if we can print the whole box in the 3d printer and have the whole box just ready with the impression of the lure already half of that already in there then we can pour the silicone in pop it out and we have our mold halves so then with the first kind of example of this i call this one the fork it's my like first panned fish uh, mold assembly so this was an all-in-one print with the silicone pour in the print was just god-awful so the uh, the mold itself is a little bit uh, you get some bleed through and stuff on it but overall I think it was kind of a success I usually just use two acrylic sheets I think these are Lexan I think small sheets on either side and then clamp it together and it seems to hold up really well the action of it is kind of more of a, a like a small slight jig pan fish jig but overall I think it was good and I think it was a good case study for using the two part print and place mold and see how viable that option was. 
So the fork then led the way to the flat grub design, which if you saw episode one of Soft Plastic July, uh, we talk about the design and everything on the flat grub. And I had made a small little mold of like four or five of these, shot it, made sure that they worked. And then what I did was turn that into like a 26 cavity or something mold and then shoot all at once. So this mold is one of those that you're not quite sure if it was going to work because it was the first larger mold, what I would consider maybe like a production mold. It worked out really well, so no complaints on, on that one. I still use this mold quite a bit. Uh, still using clamps on it, it's still kind of a pain, but overall still produces great little lures. So then I got back on my frog kick because I love designing frogs and I just can't design a good one to save my life. This is a little bit more sporty look to a frog. It's got some webbed feet on it. Same process here as all the other molds. In this one, I decided to vent towards the top where the plastisol comes in, as well as the sides and, and the feet. And um, it, it does work really well. Very little dimpling on this model at all. Uh, the only problem is, is that the basic design is just horrible. Like the feet don't clap on the surface of the water. Uh, it's just a little bit off. Still going to tweak it a little bit. It does look good in the water, and if you're going to do like a pause, uh, start, stop, stutter action with the frog, it work, looks really, really good. It's the correct size for the larger frogs that we have in the area too, so I haven't given up on this model. So the next one, we're getting pretty recent here now in the different uh, mold designs. This next one I call Wednesday Supper. It's an Odinate uh, type bait i made a video on this just because i i got the itch one day to go and design so i said ah, i'm just going to design something up ended up designing an odinate which is the dragonfly and damselflies the larva is a pretty large food group for a lot of major game fishes the mold for this turned out really well i did this as a prototype design because i didn't know how it was going to shoot uh, made really long air vents for the appendages seems to work well problem is when you put a lot of pressure on the handle while you're shooting it you end up with like an additional two or three centimeters of plastic so clean up on this is a bit of a pain but i do have uh, in the future i am going to make a mold that can shoot like three of these at a time i think the action on it's really good i think the potential for fish with it is very good i fished it a couple times and i got you know like bullhead and stuff but i haven't gave it a real good go against like crappies or bluegills or anything like that but i think it has a lot of potential uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out on an anatomical level. Uh, learned a lot on Fusion 360 about doing different, you know, patterns to paths and all that with this project. So that one, that one's kind of on the top of the list on uh, creature baits anyway. So with the next two mold designs I'm going to talk about, I've actually retrofitted those to a new wooden bolt through design. I got real sick of using clamps. Uh, clamps are a pain clamps get everywhere clamps are all over the shop and just a pain so we're we're a mature group of individuals here right we're all adults this next lure i didn't quite know what it was going to look like when i was designing it i just had an idea in my head to make something look like an ice cream cone right two scoops ice cream cone that's what i thought that's what i thought did the whole thing printed it out poured the mold did the whole number uh, did some really cool stuff modeling it, did the spiral and everything. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, I called this one the Richard. Anyway, this was uh, in a, a design I had in my head kind of concerning like Trichoptera cases. So, uh, the Caddisfly cases. Thought maybe scale that up. Maybe it would, you know, kind of translate over to maybe like a walleye type jig or maybe a bass type jig. Uh, anyway, it produces pretty decent action. It's just kind of hard to get over that initial aesthetic that uh, some people just can't seem to... Uh... Yeah. The next one I designed was the rib worm. It's kind of similar to a ringworm. Obviously, the name, there's a ringworm lure that's very popular for walleye fishing. I just kind of wanted something that was a little bit more sleek, didn't put out so much water, uh, and something that had a tail that had a little bit more action so ended up turning this kind of out it's a nicer you know it's a decent worm it's got a lot of good action on it uh i have caught fish on this 
uh, in the past already. So in the past already. Have caught fish on this one as well. Works nice. I like it. I uh, really like the design. And I really like kind of how the mold's set up. And especially now with the knobs uh, and bolt through. Uh, really, really nice design. So, so this is just a water flea. Uh, I have this on episode 2, I believe. Yeah, episode 2 of Soft Plastic July on where I pour the molds. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, this one turned out really, really well. Uh, it works really, really nice. The only complaints I have with this one is when all of the out, outer tightening knobs are together, it's kind of hard to get your hands in because there's four of them. In the future, doing a mold this size, what I would probably do is do two just to clamp it down. I don't think you need the whole four. So with this one, the very end of the tails on the panfish jig go all the way to the edge of the mold. So this allows me just to run you know, either a knife or my finger up the side of the mold and that cleans it out. So when you open the mold, the 10 finished lures that are there are actually finished, ready on the tree. You don't have to go back, cut a tail lower or cut a tail shorter, cut it, you know, uh, shape it around it like you do some of the others. It's just ready to go out of the box. This next one I'm going to talk about is the stiletto. I have a whole video fishing with only this for the day for walleye. Uh, by far, this is my favorite bait that I've designed uh, yet. It's just, it's very simple, but I think it just works really well. And uh, I know it could probably be improved somewhere, but for me, just being able to shoot these, go fishing and catch fish, that I think is probably my favorite mold to date. Um, just works. Every time I pick it up, shoot it, works. So after that, I kind of wanted to dip my toe into creature baits. I thought that'd be a cool thing to design. Creature baits are just essentially, if you're not familiar, they're, uh, I don't know, take something out of your worst nightmare when you're a kid and, uh, like, shrink that down to, like, four to eight inches, and that's a creature bait. This one is a, a direct ripoff. I'm not afraid to say it. Direct ripoff of the Sweet Beaver. So I modeled this up in Fusion 360 with a transposed picture of a Sweet Beaver. Um... I just really like the sweet beaver as a bass bait. Everybody else does. It's almost, I would say it's arguably the best creature bait of all time at this point. Uh, people love them. But I wanted a little bit more action on the front part where there's like the little flippers on the front. So I made that a little bit thinner. And then I also put some cuts in there, changed around a little bit of the, you know, tweaked it and made it my own. But overall, it's basically a sweet beaver works so this last mold i just did a couple days ago i got in my head that i wanted to make a swim bait that was also similar to stick bait uh back in the day when i was a kid i used to run sluggos all the time they're just uh they're hard kind of hard to explain but i always thought that they kind of looked like a minnow profile as well obviously they look you know like a slug profile but i think you're going more towards kind of like a, a stick bait you can rig them up in all sorts of different ways uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to scale that down and make it more into like a swim bait type scenario. So because I am primarily a jig fisherman, I thought, is there a way that I could make this kind of into a swim bait? So I took the basic profile of a sluggo. I narrowed it down a little bit. I just cut out the sides so I could get a little bit more action. And then when I cut out the sides, I took the sides and cut them at a 45 to the directional water it would be pulling. So... It might be a little hard to see in the video, but when you're pulling it at speed, it actually has a little dance in the tail, which I thought was a little bit interesting. So it ends up almost being more like a twitch roll bait, uh, if there's even that sort of thing. But the action on it turned out to be really, really nice. So I think I'm going to move this from the prototype now to uh, maybe do like an eight cavity mold on that because it is shooting really well into that silicone even if it's just a really small one cavity mold right now I'm still working out pretty well i think it's important to note too like there were other iterations between all of these this wasn't just like this is everything i've ever done at each step along these this progression we've just made in this video i had between those there were two or three failed attempts you know you'd maybe try and put a luma light into just a 3d printed you know master and then the luma light goes into the cracks and then it's like trying to get rice like basically put some super glue in rice and then take the super glue out 
you can't do it, rice is going to stick to it. So same principle in the 3D print. Unless you have an amazing machine and all that, but I don't. I'm just a guy with FDM printers that, like a hot glue gun that runs around. And I, I want to stress here too, like I'm not saying that I'm a professional at this. Like this has all been just touch and go for me. And it will probably continue to be touch and go. And every comment that I get on a video, I try and look at what I can do to enhance and make what I do better. Not only for the videos, but also just in general. Can I make a mold better? Can I make a bait better? Can I do anything that'll progressively get better? So I appreciate those comments. You guys have made me into this channel the way it is now. That's why I say we all the time. It's just me running this thing. But I feel like without the community aspect of this, I'd still be pouring, you know, hand pour molds in plaster of Paris. So just want to say thanks. I appreciate the journey. I'm looking forward to additional journeys. And uh, hopefully there won't be huge mistakes along the way. Or maybe, maybe you want huge mistakes because then it'd be entertaining. I don't blame you. So I hope you enjoyed the show, video, whatever this is. It's probably super long by now. I think I got like an hour recorded on this thing. If you made it this long, thank you. I appreciate it. I took two naps already. Don't know how you didn't. If you feel like subscribing, I'll feel like letting you. And uh, till the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.